I'm going to say something that you're probably going to hear numerous times before this evening is over. Um, but I want to welcome everybody here. I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank all of our um, um, presenters and everybody who had donated uh, food and, and beverage to this organization. Um, this is our 10th annual award ceremony and every year it gets better and better. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you have um, some idea of, of how it's grown and how much better it's gotten. And I want to say thank you to April Lynch and Ann Gordon, who spent many, many hours in putting this together. And I'll probably say that again later. Um, my name is Bill Berardi, and I'm the Dean of Business and Information Management and, and the um, um, ACE um, Academic Center for Entrepreneurship comes under my jurisdiction. April is the director of the center and, um, again, has done an outstanding job. But I do want to introduce um, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Greg Satheris who will say a few words to you before the program gets on the way. Again, thank you, and um, Craig. Thank you very much, Dean Berardi, and welcome everybody to Bristol Community College. Uh, I get the honor of introducing you uh, and welcoming you to the college on behalf of President Spraga. Uh, President Spraga wanted to be here tonight, but right now he is up at a chamber event in Taunton where, after 17 years of leading the institution, he's retiring this summer and is getting a, a lifetime achievement award, if you will, from the Taunton Chamber. So uh, on, on, on behalf of President Spraga, welcome you to this really terrific event. My job here at the college is I get to work with all of the ter terrific faculty like April Lynch, who's the director of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship, terrific deans like Bill Berardi, who heads up our business and information systems. And one of the best examples of what we do here at BCC is ACE. It takes the academics that our students learn in class and directly puts it into practice. I've had students myself when I was teaching math who wanted to open up, start a business when they graduated and they would go to ACE. ACE staff would work with them on developing a business plan in order to, when they graduate, go out and do that. There's no better example of what we do here at BCC than the work that our ACE staff do. So I want to congratulate uh, uh, our director, April Lynch, for all the great work she does. Yes, I saw some people. And now with no further ado, I get the great honor of bringing up Professor April Lynch, our director of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for that great introduction. Not quite sure I um, deserve it, but thanks. Um, so for those of you guys who do not know me, I'm April Lynch. I'm the director of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship. Um, as I look out into the crowd tonight, I see an awful lot of familiar faces and some new ones. So I'd like to welcome you all here to our 10th annual ACE Awards. Um, tonight, we're here. It's about honoring entrepreneurs. Um, the night, recipients this evening represent dedication, hard work, and tenacity. And I'm thrilled to be part of an organization that actually recognizes the advances of small businesses. Um, what I'd like to do before we present tonight's winners, we have the honor of having a guest speaker that's earned his seat against, uh, among some of the giant retailers. Uh, organizations. He's built several retail brands, currently has seven stores, and has over 150 employees. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Dave Ratner to the stage.
I need a lot of applause. I bruise easily emotionally, and that, that, it just helps me. Ha. Ha. There we go. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm Dave Ratner. It is a thrill to be here because I am a fellow entrepreneur who started with Zip Zero. I borrowed $5,000 uh, from my dad, which was a lot of money in 1975. Um, uh, after flunking out of Babson College, uh, I got a letter from the dean. This is the truth. They said, why don't you join the armed forces? Maybe they can do something with you. <laughs> Can't make this up. So in 1975, I opened a store on Route 9 in Hadley. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that area. There's, um, you've got six colleges within five miles or seven miles, right? Smith, Mount Holyoke, all these colleges. I opened up a store selling all different brands of soda at discount prices. Some of you, some of you really old folks, and you know who you are sitting in the audience, will remember soda huts back in the day. Does anyone remember soda huts? They were big around Boston. So I opened up this place selling all different brands of soda in an empty three-bay gas station in Hadley, Mass., after finally graduating college. About a year after I opened it up, and my business was actually good. And the reason, as I look back at it now, why was my business good? What was my, my unique selling proposition? Why would people come to me to buy cases of soda? And again, for all you old timers, I remember Orange Crush with the, with the pulp in it and Hires Root Beer and Knee High and all these great brands. For, for you youngsters, this is when soda was soda. And it had real sugar in it. And you could take a swig and you could feel your teeth decaying as you were swallowing. This was the real stuff. So my business was good because when you came into my store to buy a case of soda and you had your kid with you, I carried it out to the, carried the soda out to the car. I knew you liked knee-high grape. I always had it in stock for you. I treated my customers better than they could get treated anywhere else. So after about a year of living, you know, with 700,000 women around me my age, it became so painfully clear I needed help meeting women, so I bought a puppy, <laughs> which works. Bentley Beagle and I had a great time. I used to bring Bentley to work with me every day. We had a great time. We met a ton of women. And I walked into Stop and Shop one day to buy dog food for Bentley, and I looked down the aisle, and I said, holy smokes, there's more pet food in here than there is soda. So I went back to my store, went into my office, the corporate office, which was a telephone in the bathroom, and I called Nine Lives and Purina, and I went into the pet food business. So I will share with you today, along my entrepreneurial journey, that today we have seven stores, we have over 150 employees, Soda is less than 2% of my business. I would not be in business if I stayed with soda because all those great brands that I mentioned are gone. And, and uh, CVS and Walgreens and Stop and Shop sell Coke and Pepsi for way less than I buy it, not to mention BJ's or Costco. It's all about the pets. So the stuff that I learned about how to build the business is you need a unique selling proposition. You, why is someone going to buy from you? So this is a great story. So after about 15 years of being in business, and I will share with you that as the business grew, and I just, you may be thinking, looking at me, this guy's a freaking genius, right? But it's really not true. Petco, PetSmart, and I all started around the same time. Petco has about 2,000 stores. PetSmart has 1,500 stores, and I have seven. You tell me who's smarter, right? So, but anyway, we compete with Petco and PetSmart, and we beat them. 
And we beat them because we have a unique selling point, which is, number one, we treat our customers better. Number two, we are so involved in the community with, with things like this, but we're in the kid business. We sponsor every football team. We sponsor cheerleaders, church events, any place where there's a community, there is a Dave's there. So what does that do? That makes it so that everybody loves Dave's. If you ever pick up the paper and you see that Ratner died from a stroke, it was because he met somebody in a grocery store and said, I had a terrible experience in your store. That'll kill me right there. That'll, that'll just do me in. So how do we get employees? Because you're going to have to do this if you grow a business. So I will share with you, if you're in the business of, of um, customer contact, we hire illegally. I hope there's nobody from the feds here. If you come into Dave's for a job and you don't have a nice smile, you can't work at Dave's. I think that's illegal. Is it? I don't know. But that's the way we do it. I want you to, as you grow your business, if you're lucky enough to get past that first stage, you can all, this is the way you should hire. You hire for attitude, because you can always train the skill. I want you to remember that. And here's something else I want you to remember, which only took me 35 years to figure out. Be quick or be slow to hire and be very quick to fire. That's a painful lesson. People think that r running your own business is great. The worst thing in the world is having to fire employees. I don't know how many people have, have done that here. How many of you manage people here? How many of you have had to fire employees? It's awful, right? right? And if that person is sitting next to you, we'll talk later. So find a niche. Our niche is healthy pet food. Our niche is wild bird food. Our, our niche is we want, to shop, we want folks who care about their pets to shop with us. We know we lost the Costco buyer. We don't cater to the Walmart buyer. How, how many of you, first of all, how many of you have a dog or a cat? Look around the room. Isn't that unbelievable? How many of you know somebody who has a dog or a cat? Almost everybody, so it's a reasonably intelligent audience. How do we succeed? We figured out what our competitors do poorly, and so anybody who's thinking of starting a new business, my guess is you're not inventing something that hasn't been done before. Figure out, and you better know this, figure out what the competitor doesn't do well and do it better. And here's a great way to do that. I have a buddy who started a food service business that just sold his business several years ago for about 75 million bucks, starting out with one truck. He would go into restaurants, places like this, he was in the food, you know, the food service business, and here's the only question he would ask. What does your current supplier do that you wish they could do better? He never discussed price. All he wanted to know was, what do my competitors do not well, and I will do that better? So as you're starting your business, figure that out. With us, Petco and PetSmart, we love them. They're never in stock. Mrs. Jones comes to us to make a special trip for the dog food that she can really only buy in pet specialty. She does not, she wants it when she, when she gets there, which is part of the reason that the online world took off because they're, they're in stock. So always, always, always know your competition cold and know what you can do better than they can. You have to connect with your customers. So I am the luckiest guy in the world in business because I'm in the pet business. Another question. How many of you love your pet really more than you love your significant other? 
right? Right, am I in the best business or what? People come into my store, they can plunk down a hundred bucks for a bag of dog food and they're happy about it. They go into the grocery store, you know, and they buy 50 bucks worth and they're all angry because they just threw out money. I, we have the best job in the world. So if you can figure out a way to connect with your customers, it's a home run. So I, my kid took the picture of me with my, this is Trudy, who's one of my shepherds. I have two shepherds. Trudy, Trudy will take your head off if you come into the house, but she's my girl. So the minute I lie down, Trudy is bang, right on top of me, it's nap time. So that's a Saturday nap time. We took that picture, we put it on Facebook, we got more likes on that picture than we have on anything else that I've ever done on Facebook. We now use that picture on every single thing that we do. Because you're, you're all business people. Do I need to say anything else about what I do? Right? No words, no nothing. Other great examples are life is good. Right? You, three words. Life is good. And they connect with people that... Has anyone ever been to the pumpkin festival that they do? In Boston, they get like 900,000 million people. On the, on the Boston Common, they do everything they do is connecting with people. So figure out what you're going to do. Here's a great little tip when you go in to make those sales calls. When you, if you're lucky enough to get through the gatekeeper, and always be really nice to the little people. Always be nice to the gate people. If the gatekeeper doesn't like you, you ain't never getting through to the buyer. When, if you go into a buyer's office, you quickly look all around the room. You see what the buyer is into. D does the buyer have kids? Is the buyer into fishing, right? Everyone's got pictures, got stuff on their mantle, whatever. You pick that up right away. Ask questions about that. And if it's a really important one, this is what we do. You join whatever clubs or organizations that your buyers belong to. You need to connect what, with what interests them. So we have a, um, I have my best store is in Hadley. It still is. We've moved it six times. We're now next to a Whole Foods. My store is here. PetSmart is opening walking distance from my store in a very small market, Hadley, Mass. Right? Walking distance, not even bicycle riding distance. They open Monday. So in the newspaper, when they did the press release that they were opening, this was the con these were some of the comments from our customers about them opening, which was saying how stupid it was. They'll never be able to compete with Dave's. Right? And I will tell you, this is nothing that I did. It's all about that I have the best employees in the history of the world because they're the ones who are on the floor every day. So you always, always have to treat people like gold. You never know when you're going to meet them again. I don't know what kind of business you're doing. Personalize everything that you do. Right? People, especially you have, I want you to think about this for a minute. We as Americans love to do business with other small businesses, all things being equal. The problem is when you're a small business, all things aren't equal because a big business can, can, has more money, they can buy better than you, they can market better, not better, they can market more than you, advertise more. So you have to you have to turn the odds in your, in your favor. And one gripe that we as consumers have these days is that you don't, we don't like dealing with corporations. So personalize everything you do. And get your customers to love you. And I will tell you another thing. It takes, and I, and I know this, it takes you have to spend seven times as much to get a new customer 
as to get your old customer to buy again. So we have all our custom, we have a Club Dave card, like you have a CVS card or your shop, you know, your stop and shop card. We built our loyalty by catering to those customers. So if you like, if you have a dog and you use Blue Buffalo, how many of you use Blue Buffalo? Right? If you use Blue Buffalo, we know what you bought. We send you coupons for Blue Buffalo. We know that you don't use natural balance, so we don't send you coupons for natural balance. So when you get a coupon, when you get an email from Dave's, guess what? You open that email, right? Because you know it's relevant to you. So you always have to think about what would I as a consumer, what would I want from the company to do business with them? Be the expert in whatever you do. There's a company called Shields Sporting Goods. They train their staff six months before they let them on the retail floor. In all their ads, they use their staff who are the expert in, in fishing or you know fly fishing, this kind of fishing. You have to know your industry, your product, everything. You have to know it cold. Be the expert. And being that expert, you have to flaunt that. So you need to make yourself available with YouTube videos, with, on social media, with, with articles and newspapers, anywhere that your potential customers might see you. You need to be known as the expert in your field. This is my favorite one, and this only could happen with social media is get other people to do your marketing for you. When you first start your business, you have no money. You have no money for marketing. The beauty of social media is you don't need a lot of money to do this these days. I'll just share with you, after the last snowstorm in March, when we were closed for like the 800th time since January 1st, and I'm ready to shoot my, all retailers are ready to shoot themselves because we just were closed. We did a snow sucks weekend sale, 10% off everything. We bought, we spent $100 on Facebook buying targeted ads. We did dog and cat owners who lived within 10 miles around each one of my stores. $200 we spent total. We got 719 coupons back on a $200 investment. So young people who understand the, the world of social media, not old guys like me, it's, it's leveled the playing field. You can target, and, I, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but you can target to whomever you want, your demographic, whatever your customer is, so you need to use that. Here's the biggest thing that I hope everybody takes home. The whole world is built on trust. Period. End of story. With us, we are fortunate enough to have folks who trust us, and you bear witness to this, they trust us with the health of the creature that they love more than anything in the world. My number one job is not to betray that trust. Probably 25 years ago, I was selling every different brand of food in the world. You know, we had everything. How many of you remember Cycle? Remember Cycle 1, 2, 3, 4, Dull, put right? We even had Cycle 5 for dead dogs. We didn't sell a lot. People would just buy that once and it never ran out. So we had all different kinds of dog foods and I decided that I needed to protect myself and I wanted to come out with a private label Dave's Food. I found, I found a nutritionist to make up the formula. I, he told me who to make it. We slapped a label on a white bag. We put it in our stores and we said, Dave thinks this is the best food, best value. Guess what our number one selling food in the store was in no time? Dave's. Why? Because people trust us. So how do you gain that trust? We offer a 100% money-back guarantee on anything that we recommend. 
Any of you ever buy anything from L.L. Bean or Land's End? You open the box, they dare you to send it back, right? The shipping thing is right there. Everything is right there. This is one of those things that I want you to remember. They take all the risk away from doing business with them. If there is a problem, there's no problem. They take care of it. Why would you not do business with them? So people trust us, and we came out with our, with our own foods. You can't buy it at Petco or PetSmart, so it protected me. The customers got a great, got a great value. I wouldn't buy a used car from this man because I don't know anything about cars. So this is a great story. In what clearly must have been an effort to lower the bar, yours truly gets elected to the board of the National Retail Federation. I go in to my first meeting, and I look around the room, and who's in the room? Terry Lundgren, CEO of Macy's, who's got his problems now, but this was a few years ago. The CEO of American Express, the CEO of BJ's Wholesale Club, CEO of Polo, the chairman of Petco, um, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, all the CEOs of all the big retailers who, for me, these are gods, right? And me. There's two other independent retailers in the whole country who are on the board and me. So it's my first meeting, and I don't open my mouth. I'm so intimidated. The second meeting is in July, and we're in Washington because the NRF is a lobbying group, and we lobby against, we lobby for things that help the retail business. And we're going from the hotel to Capitol Hill to lobby, and they say, okay, Ratner, get in this van. And I get in the van, and I'm with Laura Sen from BJ's, um, Steve Sadoff from Saks, Karen Katz from Neiman Marcus, Mindy Grossman from um, Home Shopping Network, and Terry Lundgren from Macy's. They all look around at me at once and go, who let you in the van? So we go to Washington. We're stuck in traffic, going to Congress. And all, all of a sudden, they say, OK, so who are you? What do you do? I tell them I'm in the pet business. Now I'm the most. Now I'm the most popular guy in the van. The iPhones come out. They got pictures of their dogs. What should I feed my dog? You know, blah, blah, blah. So we go to our, our first couple meetings. One of them is with uh, Chuck Schumer. The next one's with John Kerry. And I'm just tagging along with these people. And I'm just in awe. So has anyone ever been to the Capitol? Have you ever been to one of these? It's cool, it's cool right? When you go to the Senate meetings, and we're walking through the bowels of the of the halls and the senators are walking by and I have no clue who's a Democrat or Republican. I, I, I'm like apolitical. So I'm walking from one meeting to another with Laura Sen from BJ's and Mindy Grossman from HSN. And we're chit-chatting, getting to know each other. And Mindy sort of stops and she puts her hand on my shoulder and she says, I'll bet you have your own private label, don't you? And I said, yeah. I do. End of discussion. End of the day. It's hugs and kisses goodbye. We'll see you at, at the next meeting. So it's great. I go home. So I'll ask you a question. How many of you have children? Some of you. How many of you had mothers? Most of you. How many of you remember your mothers or how many of you parents tell your children to write thank you notes? Listen to this story. I get back to my office on a Monday. I write handwritten nice to meet you notes to the folks who I was in the van with. I mailed them on a Monday. Mindy must have gotten the note on Tuesday. Mindy's the one from HSN. Wednesday morning, 9.30, my phone rings. Hi, this is Chris Nakora from Home Shopping Network. Mother, that's what they call Mindy. Just left my office and said, I need to put a deal together with you to sell your food on Home Shopping Network. Who's this really? Right? It never, ever would have happened if I didn't write that note. So one of the most important things, I don't care how old you are, 
what you do for a living, write handwritten thank you notes. So I was on Home Shopping Network, which was a, just a trip beyond, but it was crazy. Never would have happened if I didn't write that note. I'm hoping that I didn't, uh, I didn't. So this is 10 things that I want you to remember, and if you folks want them, I will email the, the um, presentation to Ann or, uh, so that you can get them. Here's a critical thing. How many of you want to start your own business? Raise your hands. I love it. Here's the number one thing. You have to have way more money than you thought you needed. I almost went bankrupt. I, I had three stores. I opened a fourth store. And has anyone heard of Mr. Murphy's Law? You young, young people who want to start businesses, you know who Mr. Murphy is? Well, if you open up your new business without enough money, Mr. you'll meet Mr. Murphy really quickly. So I opened up a fourth store. This is in 1990. And I didn't have enough money. It was in 1990-95. Do you remember the winter that we had snowstorms every single weekend? All winter long. So I opened this store. We usually, in the old days, we did a huge Christmas business. It was the year of America Online, Super Nintendo, and being closed for like eight weekends in a row. And I didn't have enough money. Fortunately, this is the trust, I'd had a relationship with my vendors where I worked out payment plans and for the next eight years paid back all my vendors every week till I got all the money that I owed them paid off. That's where your trust and your word is gold. But make sure you have enough money. Make sure you have an advisor or a devil's advocate person who will ask you questions that you have to answer. And these are questions all start with what if. Right? What if you break your leg and can't go? I mean, the list goes on and on and on because no matter what you do, these questions are going to are going to come into play. Lucy, how are we for time? We're good. How much time do we have? Three hours? What, uh, one minute? Oh, okay. The last thing, since we only have one minute, why are people going to buy from you? I don't care how good your invention is, what business you're going to come up with, you better have a reason why people are going to buy from you or, or you can't succeed. And you have to be really articulate, and you have to know how to sell that. And here's the last bit of selling that I learned about how to sell a bag of dog food that's $10 to a customer who was buying dog food for $5. You have to learn how to sell by benefits, not features. Forgive me for this, but this is what I do for a living. The dog food that's $10 a bag and the dog food that's $20 a bag. It's why did you switch from Blue Buffalo from a less expensive food? Well, Blue Buffalo is, is, uh, has meat. The other one has corn, right? You've never seen a headline, wild dogs attack cornfields, right? I mean, dogs are carnivores, but that's still not a benefit yet. So the ingredients, you look at their TV ads, are better. Here's the benefit that we use. Smaller stools. How many of you think that's a benefit? Not for yourself, I mean the dogs. And forgive me, but this is what I do for a living. Right? It's a benefit. For those, how many of you have cats? Does your litter box stink? Buy this food, your litter box won't stink. So figure out with your product, what is the benefit to the buyer. And that's partially will help you succeed. Is that it? Am I good? Am I, I'm done? So with that, everyone, thank you very much. I'm so proud of you guys.
Thank you, Dave, for that great, uh, those great stories about dog food, of all things. Um, so, uh, please welcome, we'd like to, I wanted to let you know about a change in our program. Uh, Mr. Joe Marshall was going to be here this evening uh, to hand out the awards. In his place, his associate, um, Richard Brissett, will be handing the awards to our presenting uh, winners this evening. Please, please help me in welcoming Mr. Brissett to the stage. Thank you for having me again. Unfortunately, Joe, as April said, couldn't make it, but he is here in spirit as always. Um, you know, Dave's stories is pretty interesting. Uh, as a guy who's a financial advisor, we talk about reputation a lot, trust, building it up, keeping it. And in our office, we always talk about it takes 30 years, or in my case, 20 years, to build up a reputation and it can be lost very, very quickly. So it's something you want to be aware of as you start your businesses. With that being said, our first uh, award winner in the Developing Entrepreneur uh, Award is Battleship Brew House. Jamie and Darlene Medeiros opened Battleship Brew House in 2008. A tough year for most, trust me, in the financial planning world. It was a very tough year. It was the first year I ever thought about getting out of the business, to be honest. Uh, located at 101 President Ave at the bottom, their goal is to serve a unique and rewarding experience, unmatched in service and quality. They achieve their goal by providing a combination of top quality, authentic cultural cuisine with one of the largest craft and draft beer selections around. With 40 constantly rotating beers on tap, that's right, 40 beers on tap, this is a college, that's something you should get your attention, and 80 bottled beers available, their beer selection is truly a site to be seen for all beer lovers. From burgers and flatbreads to Portuguese cuisine, Jamie has created a solid menu, mixing in cuisine from New Orleans, as well as game dinners, a summer smokehouse menu, and traditional Irish dinner on St. Patrick's Day, of course. Over the years, the brew house has helped to raise money for a variety of individuals in need and has worked to give back to the community. The real contribution, however, has been providing Hard-working locals like police, fire, and EMS, and teachers, a place to unwind over a pint or two after a long day. When they opened, there were few places in the area to get craft beers, and today they continue to provide a venue where beer aficionados come to taste beers not readily available in the area. They have become the place where interesting beers and good food may be found in an unassuming, friendly environment. Let's all raise a pint to this year's developing entrepreneur, Jamie and Darlene Medeiros. Again, Battleship Brew House. Okay, without further ado, the next award winner, Cornerstone Entrepreneur. And a Cornerstone Entrepreneur obviously is someone who's a pillar in the community, someone who's well known, and someone who gives back. And this year's winner, David Swithers and Patrol PC. And before I forget, everybody is invited at the end of me speaking, right? That's the way you wanted me to say it, after me, only me. Okay. The patrol car is out front. You can see some of the technology that patrol PC provides to local firefighters and police officers as well as EMS. Patrol PC is a U.S. manufacturer of ultra-rugged touchscreen tablet computers that are optimized for use in police, fire, and EMS vehicles. The company was founded in 1998 and offers a variety of customizable ergonomically safe and officer-friendly platforms designed to fit in any marked or unmarked vehicles or apparatus. And they have thousands of units deployed in active duty throughout the U.S. Their project is 100% American designed, manufactured, and supported. Something I think we can all be proud of. Patrol C, uh, PC complete uh, has complete control over the design and manufacturing process 
allowing them to create a technology that is truly optimized for the police, fire, and EMS workers they serve. Patrol PC is an old school, disabled veteran-owned company that prides itself on providing outstanding customer service, proactively responding to their customers' needs. Patrol PC recently helped replace the Taunton Fire Department equipment and as a result was featured in the Taunton Gazette. According to the Gazette, the tablets are said to have been providing real-time data to Taunton firefighters responding to emergency calls. 15 detachable tablets, which I thought was pretty neat, in each of the department's vehicles assist firefighters on the way to the scene by providing visual mapping information, identifying cross streets and hydrant locations, as well as telling us if they're uh, showing up at a place that has vicious animals, firearms on duty, uh, or on premises rather, um, and a number of other things like medical alert, uh, alert bracelets. The tablets also assist firefighters uh, in many other ways. Patrol PC has grown a great deal since its formation in 1998, largely in part by successful leadership and management of founder David Swithers. In fact, it has grown so much, it's currently looking for additional space to accommodate their larger footprint. So without further ado, let's bring up David Swithers and welcome uh, Patrol PC. Again, Patrol PC. And don't forget, the cruiser is outside. And it's definitely pretty neat. I saw all the flashing lights, and trust me, I'm like a fly. That stuff attracts me. So, The next uh, award winner is in the category of Benevolent Entrepreneur. Um, and I tell you, when I read this uh, biography, I was pretty impressed. Dr. Philip Robitaille, DMD, and if you're not familiar, Doctor of Medicine in Dentistry. I had to look that up. Uh, a member of the Massachusetts Dental Society, Dr. Robitaille epitomizes the category as someone who has made positive contributions to the well-being of the region's population and environment. He has devoted his life to being socially conscious and serving his community, as well as traveling abroad to help poor people who otherwise would not have dental care. Since 2004, Dr. Robitaille has traveled to Honduras, often bringing his staff along to provide dental care in villages that have often never seen a modern dentist. He's even gone so far as to help raise money for a small dental clinic in Honduras so they can have dental care when he's not able to provide it himself. Dr. Robitaille is best known, however, for his personal acts of kindness and his community involvement closer to home. Over the years, Dr. Robitaille has helped the Boys and Girls Club, provided dental exams in Somerset schools, and also been a volunteer dentist in the BCC Dental Hygienic Clinic. Did I mention most of his staff has degrees from BCC? <laughs> Recently, when we, he heard about a BCC student who was affected by a fire, he went uh, above and beyond, as it seems he always does with his wife, and we're quick to help out that student get back on their feet. Dr. Robitaille's office always also participates in Give Kids a Smile Day, providing dental care to needy children. He believes oral health is directly related to their overall health and would never want children to fall through the cracks. He has donated his skills in countless hours to help people young and old in his community and always stays on the cutting edge of both equipment and technique. Dr. Robitaille is known for his kindness and compassion. He's truly a dentist you shouldn't be afraid of. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Robitaille and this year's Benevolent Entrepreneur winner.
Again, Dr. Robitaille. One of the things that really impressed me about Dave's story today was just his, his passion for what he does. And it's a simple thing, it's, it's pet food, but he just loved it. And you could just see it in, in his, his speech and, and the way you kind of had to give him the hook to get off stage. He really seemed to enjoy it. And it's, it's something that I think is just, it's something that we can all learn from. And I think all the award winners this year have the same traits and clearly they demonstrate them on a daily basis. So our next category is Sustainable Entrepreneur. This year, the Sustainable Entrepreneur is Mary-Kate Caning and the Local Bouquet. At the Local Bouquet, they have taken two things they love, weddings and fresh seasonal flowers, and combined them to bring their clients the most beautiful designs for their special day. The Local Bouquet is committed to creating gorgeous floral decor that complements the chosen time of year for the client's wedding using only 100% local and American grown flowers. Each wedding the local bouquet plans and designs is inspired by their client's love story. From gorgeous bridal bouquets made of all locally grown flowers to an elegant arbor overflowing with lush greens and colorful blooms, each experience is custom and personalized to their client's style. And I think there's a sample right over there too for anybody who's not yet married and thinking about a, fl a floral designer little plug. All of the local bouquet's ingredients are gathered fresh from their fields, forged from their farm, or sourced from local flower farmers. The local bouquet believes the origin matters as a result and are able to give their clients unique, fresh, and stunning flowers for their big day that are eco-conscious and organic. The local bouquet designs with mother nature, making their style effortless and natural. Oh, and by the way, did I mention absolutely gorgeous? Mary Kate started the local bouquet with a love for design and a passion for providing a product that was seasonable and sustainable. From the moment couples come to her, she is fully invested in their big day, giving all her time and energy to them. It is Mary Kate's biggest goal to provide not only the freshest, most beautifully grown flowers in the area, but also to provide the highest level of customer service leaving couples excited to work with the local bouquet. Without further ado, let's welcome Mary Kate Cannon and the local bouquet, this year's Sustainable Entrepreneur Award winner. Again, Mary Kay Cannon and the local bouquet. I'll keep going. I guess I'm next. You're next. Uh, thank right. you. Well, you got to listen to me for a little bit longer. Um, one of my favorite entrepreneurs is here tonight. And she's over there. Um, Hiding, I think. She's sitting there with her mom, Mary Ann. But Paige, why don't you come up here for just a minute? I met Paige um, at one of our entrepreneurship days. And um, she impressed me a whole bunch. Paige is an entrepreneur that makes jewelry, keychains, is one here. Um, she got up and made a presentation in front of 75, 100 high school kids. <coughs> Told them about her business. Her business um, is a very profitable one. In fact, she made herself a hundred bucks just at Entrepreneurship Day. And then I learned from her mom just today that Paige took on the NFL. <laughs> 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 
and she made some jewelry or some um, um, Bracelet. bracelets with the NFL logo on it. <laughs> and the NFL was not happy. <laughs> She got an email from the NFL and then a phone call I'm told telling her to cease and desist. <laughs> I think one of these days she's going to beat the NFL. This is a very courageous young lady here beside me. And I want to let you all know that she's graduating from high school this year. And she's coming to BCC next year. OK, I'm going to call up now um, April. And she will have a few words to say for you. And um, then we can get to the Food. April. No pressure. Okay, guys. I wanted to just say again, congratulations to the winners. And thank you for all the great work that you do. Keep up the great work. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for attending the event. We really appreciate it. I'd like to thank all my students for coming. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank our guest speaker, Dave Ratner, who had a lot of great stories to share tonight. Um, I'd like to thank Chris Rodericks for some of the amazing uh, culinary cuisine that he shared with us. Just as a side note, Chris has also been a BCC student here. Now the plug for BCC. Um, any of you brides that are going to go look at the bouquet, you might want to talk to Chris about some of um, his sushi and other delights for your event. I'd like to thank my Division Three colleagues for their support, um, Doris and John, and you know who you are. I'd like to thank all the student volunteers that made this night what it is tonight. Thank you for all your help. And most of all, I'd like to thank my uh, colleague, Ann Gordon, who has been tirelessly making this event um, possible and endlessly working on it. So I'd like to thank you for all your hard work. So at this time, guys, um, two things. I'd, if possible, we'd like to get all the winners up for one group picture before dinner. We're going to ask all of you that are seated to make your way to the tables, and we're going to have our student ambassadors come table by table and let you know when the buffet is ready, which I'm hearing is probably going to be momentarily. So again, thank you for coming. Thanks for a great night, and congratulations to all the winners.